Hey guys, here we are for another video and in this one we're going to be using Tableau Prep to clean data and then Tableau Desktop to predict how much revenue there is in this particular data set. So let's go. All right, guys, here we are in Tableau Prep Builder, and I know I haven't done a whole lot of videos on Tableau Prep. Um, primarily, we do Tableau Desktop, but I am building a Tableau Prep or data cleansing portion of a course on my website on uh, Jellyman Education. If you want to check out the website, it is in the description below, and that course will teach you how to become a successful analyst, programmer, designer using Tableau. And it's pretty much led me to, you know, make six figures and have a lot of opportunities and jump, jump from job to job as you see fit. I mean, that's really um, a lot of what it's about and then being, uh, being able to provide for your family. So really exciting stuff. So what we're gonna do in this one, and you can download the data set if you wanna follow along. We have a particular data set here that is revenue. So if I open this up, right? And there's just a bunch of fake data that I kind of put together. Um, what we want to do first is clean the data. So a lot of people ask, you know, well, why do you have to clean data? Can't you just use it as is? Well, generally speaking, in the real world, we don't really get clean data right away. And even if it is clean, it doesn't mean that we can visualize off it because we need to restructure it. We need to prepare it in order to get it to do certain things. For example, let's say I wanted to visualize over time what the earnings are. Well, I can't really do that with this because the month, day, and the year, they're really just integers, right? They're just single numbers on their own. And Tableau in the visualization stage won't recognize that as a date. It just recognizes it as a number. So I can't really do any date analysis, right? The other thing is if you look over here with the revenue, the data type is a string. You can tell by this ABC right here. And the USD, so the currency is actually stitched inside of that so we need to split that up because otherwise we can't do any mathematics or any measures or any calculations or aggregations on these numbers here all right and then we also got to do a little bit of cleanup so we'll have a look and i'll walk you through step by step what we're going to do so firstly we're going to create a date off these three fields because it's much more useful that way and if you ever needed to isolate a year or a month or a day, you can do that off a date and it's all built into Tableau so we don't have to worry. So we're going to start by doing create calculated field. And we're going to use the make date formula. So we're going to go transaction date, go in here and look for make date. And you want to go make date, year, month, day. So very easy. We go make, I think I can just double click from here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we want to bring in transaction year, month, and day. So we'll go transaction year, transaction month, transaction day. And that's it. So if I press save here, two things are going to happen. It's going to create a brand new field here and everything's going to shift to the right. And then also it's going to add to our timeline of a step that we did in cleansing. So we'll go save. As you can see, let me just maximize this. As you can see now, we've added to this history. So if you're unfamiliar with Tableau Prep, sorry, my dogs are just eating. If you're unfamiliar with Tableau Prep, it remembers step-by-step step what you do. Unlike Excel, where once you make an operation, it's done, and there's not really a trail. You can do undo, but you can't actually see them, and you can't go into a middle step and make a modification, right? This is where like these kind of flow tools like Ultrix and Nime are really, really great for data preparation. You know, data scientists love it. Okay, so we have here the transaction date, which means we no longer need these three. So I'm going to select, control, select, control, select, and we're going to remove. And as you can see, it's added that as another step. And if I ever wanted to go back and go, actually, what did I do in this step? I can just click on a previous one and it kind of goes back in time. So I can actually see what's happening step by step, which is fantastic. All right, so we've got the emails here, as you can see, just from this portion alone, we can tell that there's actually duplicates. That means certain emails exist more than once, which means we can't use this as a primary key necessarily, but it just depends on what we're doing. These ones look fine. No duplicates here. Bundle single test looks fine. This we need to split. So we're going to go into the three dots. We're going to go split values and we're going to go custom split. In here, we're going to put space as our separator because that's how it's separated. And we're going to split off both of them. So all and split. This will create for us two new 
fields off of this one, which means we no longer need this. We can remove that. We can clean this up, so make sure you retitle. So let's call this currency. And we're going to make this uppercase. Now I can type it in and change it, or I can just go clean, make uppercase, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lazy. All right, next one is this one. So the first thing I notice is obviously the title, but also the data type. So it's storing it as a string, even these, even though these are numbers. And that's because the original field was a string, so it kind of carries over. So in order to do mathematics on this, we need to change this to a number data type. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go to decimal. Okay, And let's call this revenue. Done. All right, so that's cleaned up. Next. We come over here. So this looks fine. That looks fine. Here you can see there were actually two rows where it was typed in incorrectly. And it seems to be the same here as well. So we can actually group these together. So just highlighting both using control, right click and group. Okay, that's going to bring them together. Let's do it for the same uh, for this one as well. Group. There you have it. So how quick is that to clean? Now, if I wasn't talking and I was just kind of like doing this, uh, you can clean data sets like this in mere seconds, right? Tableau prep is still considered kind of like a baby cleansing tool because it can't handle huge amounts of computation. So if you have tools like Alteryx, um, software packages that cost like $10,000 a year, that's the reason why they're 10,000 a year because you save so much time in data preparation um, compared to like coding it in SQL or doing it in Python. Building in Alteryx, like it just does it so quickly. Tableau prep for smaller data sets and testing is fantastic. Um, here we go for these two fields. They don't really add any additional value. So let's get rid of them to get rid of the clutter. That's it. All right, a few clicks and our data set is clean and ready to go. So. What I can do to bring this into Tableau Desktop is I can either create an output, right? And I can output as a hyperfile or a CSV or Excel and then drop that into Tableau. But what I actually prefer to do is, especially when I'm in the early phases of building, I will simply go right click and go preview. And what that does is Tableau Prep will compile a temporary file for us and automatically create a Tableau desktop. So you can see I haven't touched anything. It automatically created a Tableau desktop uh, workbook with that temporary file attached. You can see here on the top left. All right, fantastic. Right, and that's so that we can quickly test and build and prototype um, before we get into any serious productionized results. All right, so let's keep going. I'm going to maximize this. Now, typically, I don't work in this kind of scale, but um, to make it easier for the Tableau prep, I thought I'd make it bigger. So let's go ahead. What I want to work out in this data set is, can we estimate? No, I don't want to say predict. Can we estimate roughly how much will we be making a month? So let's say this is our data set for our revenue for our business. How much money do we think we will get recurring per month? All right. So let's go through the investigation. If I go here and view data, and I look at the different payment types. We know that some are subscription, some are free. So the free ones we're not interested in because they're not really bringing in any money. So let's start there. Let's confirm this. Let's go payment type and let's drop it in here. All right, no, hang on, wrong one. Payment type, there we go. And let's look at the amount of revenue. So if I'm gonna drop that into text, you can see that the free and my dog is jumping on me and the free one is zero dollars so we don't need this and then we have these ones which are one time so they're not really recurring revenue streams so we can get rid of that as well and that leaves us with subscription all right now let's look at this over time so we don't need payment type anymore and I would like to see this in a line chart. So let's move the revenue stream into rows and using that date field that we created, let's right click drag into columns and let's look at it on a monthly basis. So that gives us kind of a, a rough indicator. Remember, this is not like a perfect science. We just want a rough feel of like, are we talking $1 a month? Are we talking 50? Are we talking 100? Is it 50,000? What's our ballpark, okay? So let's go month. And I'm going to switch this to bars. All right. Now, as you can see, if I add the labels in here, cool, we are making about 218, 314. So if I go 
analytics and just simply add a average line. Are we saying that it's $108 a month, right? Well, not necessarily. We need to investigate a little bit more. So the first thing is, let's look at how many customers this is actually made up of. So if I take the email and I right click drag into rows, I want to do a distinct count. So for example, is 314 one customer? Is it 30 customers? Is it 300? Let's look at that first. Okay, so as you can see here, and I'm going to move my face over here, right? The number of unique customers seems to be changing over time. So it doesn't look like we have a consistent user base. So really to do a prediction, I don't think we can do it right away. What I would like to see is um, a normalized amount, which is of these sales divided by the number of customers, what's the average amount that we do get from customers when we have them? So we can do the sum of revenue divided by the distinct count of emails. Now there's a few ways you can do it. You can go and create a calculated field. We can bring in revenue divided by email. That's one way to do it. Or you can do this way, which is hold control, duplicate the revenue, all right? So these two are now the same. This one and this one are the same. And then all we want to do is a shelf calculation. So I'm going to go in here, double click, copy it, control C, go into some revenue, divide, control paste, right? That's how I prefer to do it. You don't have to, there we go. All right, so this is actually telling us that roughly we are making about $28 per person on average, right, per month. Now, if I wanted to go even closer without eyeballing, I can simply take the average and place it here on this last calculation. So this is now telling me it's probably closer to $24. So we're trying to be a bit conservative as well. So now we want to see, well, if we know the average per customer, how many customers do we actually have? All right, let's do a new sheet. So the analysis I'd probably do for this is if we look at transaction date and drop it into month again, and then what we do is we take the revenue and bring it up like so. Now this looks a little bit different because we have those filters that we applied before. So we just want to make sure that we have the same filter. And a cheat way is if you go here, apply to worksheet, selected worksheet, just apply it to the other one as well. Okay, That way you know you've applied exactly the same filter. Then what I want to do is I want to see how many emails this actually is. So if I drop email into color and go add all members, you can see these actual customers. And as I scroll down, you can see that they don't exist for the entire time scale, which means we had customers at one point, you know, we had customers that were in the early phases, but then they canceled their subscription, right? And as we go, you can see this customer, for example, seems to be a, a current customer. All right, same with these ones, same with these ones, right? So really the best indicator is not to take all customers. The best indicator in this situation is maybe take um, just this group here. And who is in both, for example? So if we do that and just isolate this, keep only, and then we count, well, how many customers is this? How many unique customers? We can get rid of the date. We can get rid of the revenue. We can move email here, and then we can count them, right? So a cheat way is simply, if you go down here, you'll see, um, oops, you'll see 16 marks down there, or we can simply go here, measure, count this thing, right? Which brings us to 16. So now if I take the average, which is roughly $24, and multiply it by this, it'll tell us a rough indicator. So 24 by 16 is roughly $384 a month. So that is our high level quick check. We did it in 15 minutes analysis to tell our CEO, look, we're looking at roughly $380, $400, give or take. That's how much we're making. Multiply out by the next six months. This is roughly how much revenue we expect to see. Ballpark, ballpark, quick 10 minute analysis, right? So that is it for this analysis. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this. I'd love to hear what you guys think. You know, drop me a line in the comment or 
let me know what kind of analysis you want me to do um, and then i can include it into youtube but also include it as case studies for the website as i'm designing the tableau prep section so if you want to check out the website it's in the description below thank you guys again and i will see you next time